Let us all please stand. A warm and hearty welcome to each and every one. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise and I warmly God. welcome those of you who are listening in online. Pray God will be with us as we celebrate our Easter Sunday. Let's Amen. bow our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude and reverence. As we gather to lift our voices and hearts yes. in praise and worship, we thank you for the privilege of being able to enter your presence and seek you in this place. Have your way in this service, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Rejoice. Yes, rejoice. Let us rejoice. Amen. He has risen. Yes. risen. Praying your Easter will be bright with the hope and joy of our risen Savior. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thanks, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for bringing us together yet another time. Yes. Today is bright and sunny. A new day like no other day. So let us lift our voices in praise and worship to our God and risen King. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, our first song this morning, Because He Lives. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Hallelujah. I can face Hallelujah. Without any doubts or any fears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He arose. Our next sound. He arose. to the congregation. Amen. Happy Easter to those who are here and those online on this beautiful day. This morning's scripture reading will be taken from John, Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. The Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. When you have it, please say amen. 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 And reading, but Mary stood without, without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, because thou, they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. 
Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Here ended the reading. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And now you will sing, You are my all in all. <laughs>
the Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, oh God. Truly, the song says, you are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasures that I seek. Yes, Lord, you are my all in all. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And we seek you as a precious jewel. Hallelujah. Lord, truly to give up, I will be a fool. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, you are my all and all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Glory to God. As we celebrate, oh God, hallelujah, your resurrection. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy. Hallelujah. And we give you praise. And we give you thanks. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. And we bless your name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise you, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. This morning, dear God, as I, I come, dear Father God, before you, hallelujah, I humble myself, dear God. Hallelujah. Oh God, giving you praise, honor, and glory. Acknowledging you, dear God, to be truly our all in all. Yes. Hallelujah. Today, dear God, you are the life giver. And this is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're celebrating your resurrection. We're celebrating, oh God, your life that you have given unto us, dear God, today that we may come in, we may enter Oh, God, I thank you. I bring my pastor before you, dear God. Our pastor Boyce, Pastor Mark Boyce, dear God. I ask, so oh God, today that you may bless, oh, God, and keep him. Continue to keep him, dear God. Continue to watch over him, dear God, and order his steps, dear God. Guide and direct his path, dear God. As he, dear Father God, depend truly on you, dear God. Lord, we thank you for this day. And we thank you, dear God, for each and every one, those on the line and those that are gathered here today, dear Father. Oh, God, as we come, dear Father God, giving you praise. Father, as I bring, oh, God, our mothers, dear God, unto you, dear God, our mother cattle, dear God, our, the elderly, dear Father God, the ones that are home and and shut in, dear Father God, and I bring, dear Father God, each and every one here to you, dear Father God, from the youngest, dear God, to the oldest one, dear Father God, we give you thanks. We thank you, dear Father, we thank you for every song, we thank you for our sister Kelman, dear God, we thank you for our sound leaders, dear Father God, the congregation, dear Father. We thank you for everything that will be said and done here today, dear Father God. We have a prayer list, dear Father God, just one person, our Marva Bishop, dear God, you know all about her. Dear Father God, she's hospitalized because of a broken hip. Lord, and we're calling on you who is the great physician. Yeah. We're calling on you who heals their God. Yeah. Lord, who mends their God. Anything that is broken, their Father God. Lord, you are well able 
and we, brought, we bring her today before you, dear Father God, that you may touch her, dear Father God. Lord, I pray that even today, Lord, on this Easter Sunday, that Father God, that she too will cry out to you, giving you praise, honor, and glory, oh God, for what you have done, your mercies, their God is everlasting. And Father God, I pray that, Lord, that she would lay hold, dear God, on you, that a God who can, God, bring her through, Lord, this process that she's going through. Father God, heal and deliver. In the name of Jesus. Father God, anyone else there, Father God, that may not be feeling well today, God, remember them. Lord, in your love and your mercies, dear God, we thank you, Father God. We praise you and we honor you, Lord. Bless everything that may be said and done. You brought us through, oh God, to another week. May we, may we be ever grateful and be grateful, dear God, that you have brought us through, that we may rejoice and be glad in it, dear Father God. We thank you, dear God. Bless again, dear Father God, everything that would be said and done here today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. And at this time, we will be favored by, with a selection by our praise and worship team. And it's entitled, I Am Redeemed. <laughs>
they will begin humming a new song, a song composed by God, arranged for his children. As the slave who by grace approach the land of their dreams, the host of heaven will step aside. Even the angels will be silent, for they cannot sing this new song. For it is a song reserved for voices who once cried out for the Redeemer, those washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, these are the redeemed. I am redeemed. I am Chains. The chains of sin and set me free. If you're free this morning, raise your hand and say, Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thanks be to God. He set me free. Yeah, I, I, I feel free. I am free. Yes, free to praise God, free to worship God, free to love you, free to pray for you, free to help you. I am free indeed, free indeed, because of what he did. Yes, because of what he did. I think the year was 2013 when my dear wife retired from her job. Yes, 2013, it was three years after I retired. I guess she was a little bit tired of me being home and said it's time for her to come home too. <laughs> so she retired in 2013. And when I went to collect the stuff at the office, there was a huge plant in the office. Nice size, about four feet. I have to watch what I'm saying because Celine listens with rapt attention. <laughs> I was babysitting Celine on, on Thursday and some of what she was telling me that she heard in church. <laughs> I was like, yes, my dear, keep listening. I'm sure she heard things that some of you didn't hear. <laughs> I could see you're listening for this story right now. But, um, but it was this nice plant. It was about four feet tall. So it wasn't as tall as I was. And I load up all this stuff and I brought it home. What a nice plant she had right at the corner of her office. And I brought it home, put it downstairs in our family room. And after it's been down there for maybe three weeks or so, I noticed that the plant looked like it was starting to die. And I was a little concerned because I loved that plant. And I said, well, there wasn't much I can do with it because it's certainly on the way out. So what I did with it, I took it and put it out in the backyard and said when the, uh, the day for collecting uh, the yard 
waste, which is the bushes and all that stuff, come around, one day I would, I would put it out. But I rest it outside. But I did not know how much life that plant had in it. It just looked dead. It looked dead, you know. By all my imagination, all my thoughts, it looked dead. But that plant had a lot of life in it. I didn't get to chew it out the first yard waste day. Then the second one, I wasn't around. And then one day, I looked out in the backyard, and I said, this thing is coming back from the dead. <laughs> I said, this plant is coming back from the dead. So what I did, I cleaned up the pot, cleaned it up, and I, I brought it back into the family room. And uh, all of a sudden, the plant is teeming with life and beautiful. I had to trim it back, and now it's taller than I am. That's not saying much, right? <laughs> But it's taller than me, so it's got to be about six feet tall, more than that, and teeming with life. And you know the lesson I, I, I learned? Nothing that God creates really dies. You see, we think it dies, but it doesn't die. And people thought that Jesus had died. <laughs> People said, oh, he's, he's dead, yeah, we, we saw him die on the cross. And as a matter of fact, in the Gospel of Mark, and uh, uh, I think it's the, 16th, the 15th, 16th chapter, I think it is, where they were making fun of, of Jesus, Mark 16. Yeah, and, uh, verse, and actually the chapter before that, the 15th chapter, you see, right into the 16th, they were poking fun at Jesus. You see? And they were saying things like, why doesn't he save himself? Because he saved others. Why doesn't he heal himself? He healed others. Why doesn't he help himself? He helped others. And one group were so obnoxious that they said, if he came down off the cross and helped himself, we would believe. In other words, if he did it on my terms, we would, uh, I would believe, we would believe. You see, too often we want God to do things our way. We want God to do it our way. And that's exactly what they were saying. If he came down off the cross, we would believe. What an obnoxious thing to say to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope nobody here is approaching God through Christ Jesus, our Lord, on their own terms. That's not going to work. Somebody said, when I have time, I will come. No, that's not going to work. You may not get time. Somebody said, when I grow up, you know, little man over there? I, did, I should say little boy over there. When I grow up, I'll, I'll serve the Lord. It's better to serve him now. Amen. Right now. Amen? Because nobody knows what tomorrow holds, right? Little children, you can serve the Lord when? Right now. Right now. Right now, in your youth. Remember now thy creator? when you were young. When the evil days come not, and the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, now is the time to serve God. So that plant is, is booming, teeming with life. I thought it had died. And today we are celebrating the risen Lord. Many thought he was died and gone. Oh, oh yes, they thought he had died and gone. Praise be unto God. And as you listen to the word that was read in the Gospel of St. John and 20, you would see something here. Mary Magdalene stood outside by 
the tomb weeping. Now, why was she weeping? Well, of course, she was sorrowful. Why was she sorrowful? The one whom she loved in her mind had died. The one whom she adored had what? Died. Amen? Amen? But I'm here to tell you this morning, God is not dead. He is still alive. Amen. Yeah, that gives me, that, that energizes me this morning. Yeah. He is not dead. He is alive. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Now, if you read the other gospels, especially the gospel of Mark say, where the same two women went early. Somebody said early. early. Come to church early, will you? <laughs> but they went early in the morning to do what? To anoint, that's the gospel according to Mark, yeah. to anoint the body of, of Jesus. So they had spices, mm -hmm. you know, to anoint the body and take care of the one whom that they, they loved. And when they got there, uh, according to the other gospels, they said, who is going to roll this away, this big stone? that was at the entrance to the tomb. Because they couldn't do it, you know. They put a pretty big one to make sure nobody can move it. And in Mark it said, when they turned, they saw that the stone had been removed. Yeah, removed. Now back to John, and all of this ties together. See, so some Gospels gave it a a different picture of what's going on. But back to the one that was read, and uh, Mary stood and she stooped and she looked in and she saw these angels and they said, why are you weeping? And she said, because they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. This is love, isn't it? That these women love their Lord. And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me. Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. She loved him. Do you love Jesus like that? Do you love him like that, my friends? Don't be afraid to answer. I know, because if you say yes, you've got to start living. <laughs> And some of you are not ready to live. And what I meant by living is living for God. So sometimes when you ask the question, people are a little hesitant because you are making a commitment that you will live for Jesus. And living for Jesus means that you have to stop living certain ways and adopt new ways. Because any man in Christ is a new creature the old things are passed away, and behold, things are new. If you were a liar, you got to stop lying. If you were a thief, you got to stop stealing, right? If you were a hypocrite, you got to stop that. <laughs> Change happens when you are a new creature in Christ. Amen? Amen. And so... Mary was really concerned about where they had laid him. Now, I want to say something up front today. And I'm going to pivot back to this. He is risen indeed. He's not there in that tomb. I said he is risen indeed. He is not in the tomb. Amen? Amen. Now, nobody here in the hearing of my voice in the church or online has ever met 
Jesus the man. Am I right? Nobody here, and I speak subject to correction, but I say to you that nobody here has met the man Jesus. And you know why? Physically, earthly, bodily, and you know why? Because he is risen out of that body, out of that earthy body. And it's not walking around the earth and around the world in an earthy body like that. Because he would be subject to the same limitation to being in one place at one time with an earthly body like yours and mine. But who have we met? Glory be to God. Somebody help me. Who have we met? We have met the risen Lord. Whose spirit resides in us. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart, my dear friend. Do you believe this? I know he lives within my heart. I'm no longer the same as I was. And that's because of the risen Lord. What happens when you encounter the risen Lord? Let's take a look at Mary's example and let's look at a few, a few more along the way. Now, when the risen Lord said to Mary, John 20, 16. When the risen Lord said to Mary, Mary, I wonder what it sounded like, you know. When somebody called your name, especially your mom, right, Celine? When mom said, Celine, you jump because you know that's mommy, right? Especially when daddy said, Celine. You jump because you know you know that's daddy. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, now, if Brother Jordan said Celine, she might just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that man? <laughs> but then daddy says, Celine. Oh, she 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 comes to attention. Mm -hmm. You follow my point? Yeah. You follow my point. Yeah. So when Jesus said, Mary, oh, oh, she heard the voice of the one that she loved. And then she heard the voice of the one that she loved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And it wasn't the voice of, uh, of a fleshly body anymore, but it was the voice of the risen Lord. And she heard that voice saying, Mary. Glory be to God. What was her response? Her response was, Rabbani. Oh, glory be to God. Rabbani. That's how she addressed him after the resurrection. Rabbani. Which is translated teacher, master. Glory be to God. A term of respect and affection used to address a teacher that's revered, her Lord, Rabbanai. So we see it was a, a powerful expression of her faith, the way she responded to the risen Lord. Do you believe that he's risen this morning? That's the reason we're here, because we believe that he is risen indeed. My next question is, have you met the risen Lord like Mary did? Hallelujah. And if you have, what did he say to you? How did you encounter him when you met him? How did you experience him? Praise be unto God. And I am here to say that when you have experienced the risen Lord, something happens. Something happens. Your life 
will change. They will be a, a reflection of the risen Lord in you. And look at here, there was no reason for Mary now to go back to the tomb looking for a physical Jesus. Oh, we be the God. Because she had met the risen Lord. Amen. So not going back to the, to the tomb. Some people want to take us back to the tomb. They say he's dead. How can you prove that he's risen? Because they're just like the ones standing around saying, you help others, you healed others, you save others. Now we want you to save yourself and help yourself. And, but he wasn't there to save himself. He was there to save you and I. Glory be to God. Yeah? Yes, it's the energy of the risen Lord that's got me here this morning. Oh, I can feel his presence all over me. That's, that's how I feel this morning. I hope you're feeling the same way. I, I hope you didn't just dress up to come here to, to say, well, I went to church on Easter. No, I've come here to experience the presence of the risen Lord. That when I leave, I, I, I leave feeling good, feeling great. That I have met him, that I've experienced him. Oh, that I can carry on in life with the energy of the risen Lord. Oh, yeah, flowing through my innermost being every day of every life. He is living in and among us. In us and among us. And that's how we know he's here. And he is alive, my friend. And there's no reason for me to live as though he were dead. There's no reason for you to live as though he were dead. Live like he is the risen Lord. Let your behavior, let your attitudes, let your lifestyle, let everything that you do reflect that the risen Lord is with you and living in you. And I am here to say today from a personal testimony that I am alive because he is alive. Amen. I am here to say that I have passed from darkness into light because he is risen. Amen. Praise be unto God. And I am here to say that I have passed from death into life because he is risen indeed. Amen. Glory be to God. And it wasn't because I was virtuous. It wasn't because I was righteous, but it was because he gave his life for me and for you. Went all the way to Calvary. Went into the tomb. But thanks be to God, he didn't stay in the tomb. He arose from the dead, triumphant as he said. And that is why we are here this morning rejoicing in the risen Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He arose from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He lives within my heart. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. glory be to God. Hallelujah. When you meet the risen Lord, what happens? Man's greatest, one of man's greatest problem is the problem of doubt. Anybody here is a doubter? That's your problem. Man's greatest problem is, is his doubt. Matthew, Matthew 14, 31. Read that when you get a chance. You see, Jesus was dealing with Peter there. But man's greatest, one of man's greatest problems is the problem of doubt. Oh, he wouldn't believe. Oh, the other disciples after they met the risen Christ, they were happy. They were rejoicing. And they went to their other disciple, Thomas, and said, Thomas, he is alive. And Thomas said, what, are you kidding me? Alive? <laughs> and he was one of the disciples. And he said, alive? He said, I don't think so. But furthermore, unless I put my finger into his womb, and unless I feel the blood... <laughs> I, I can't believe this thing. I, I got to see it to believe it. 
And when Jesus made an appearance to them, the risen Lord now, comes to them while they were gathered together. He said, Thomas, come over here. He said, take your hand and take your finger and push it into my side. Feel. And when Thomas did that, what did Thomas say? How did he respond? He responded, my Lord and my God. <laughs> he said, Master, my Lord and my God. Oh, something hit him like a thunderbolt. Now he believed. And Jesus said, blessed are those that have not seen, but believe. Do, do you want to put your finger into, or are you going to believe today? <laughs> do you want to see some big miracle for you to believe? You want it done on your terms, or are you going to believe? And let me tell you something. Everyone have, of us have a key, you see, which opens the door of our hearts, you see? I was meditating on doors, you know. Every, every, everybody have, anybody here have a house in with no door? <laughs> why, why do you need a door? You, you, need, <laughs> you need a door to keep people out. <laughs> or, or on the other hand, to keep you in. All right. but, but everybody have a door of some kind. And a door without a key is no door, right, Sister Vesta? Because if you left home today and you didn't have your key to lock your door, then you're saying whoever wants to go in can just go in because the door is not locked. Right? You make it easy. So everybody have door. We have door. Even we have door in the bathroom in the house. Do with a key, with a lock. There are locks in everywhere. But these doors must be open in order for somebody to get in. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Now the risen Lord is not forcing himself upon you, but he has given you a key that can let him in. Yes. And he's standing at the door, knocking, and waiting for you. To let him in. The risen Lord. And you say, Pastor, what's the key? The key is your belief. Your belief. The day that you believe that he is risen indeed is the key that you have to open the door of your heart and let him in. But you got to believe it first. If you haven't believed it yet, the door of your heart is still locked to the risen Lord. Are you going to use the key today that you have? I know that you have the key because God gave it to you. Every son of Adam can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I know that you have the key. I'm asking you to use the key. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, and let him into your heart. Paul was a man that did not believe. His name was Saul at the time. And he did not believe. And he was going around to persecute those who believed. And on the way to Damascus, the risen Lord, I'm not talking about the man Jesus. I'm talking about the risen Lord. On the way to Damascus, the risen Lord appeared unto him. Yes. Glory be to God. And called out his name, Saul. Remember when Jesus said, Mary? And her response was what? Rabbani. Glory be to God. Now he's talking to Saul. And he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And all of a sudden, bam, he got the connection right there on the spot. And his response was, 
Who is it, Lord? And the Lord responded and said, yeah, it is me, Jesus the Christ, whom you are persecuting. It is me. And what was his response? Lord, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? Praise be unto God. Two disciples are walking up to Emmaus. Oh, they're reflecting on the sad things that have happened. How tough things are. Oh, oh, we lost the Lord. We, oh, he died. They crucified him. And they're walking up to Emmaus having a reflection on what happened. And the risen Lord appeared unto them. Joined them and started walking with them. And they're talking back and forth with them. Back and forth, back and forth. And when they reach a point where they could turn into break bread, oh, he opened their eyes and they recognized that it was him. And what was their response? Did not our hearts burn while he was talking with us? I want to ask you, friends, brothers and sisters, when you meet the risen Lord, how do you feel? Doesn't it? Is there a burning in your heart that says, I know that this is him? I'm not talking about preachers and different people like that. Everybody can preach. If, if you read your Bible and you can talk, you can preach. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about the risen Lord meeting you. And I want to say to you that in all of these examples that I drew, the risen Lord did not meet them in church. He met Mary down by the tomb. He met Saul on the way to Damascus. He met Thomas at a gathering of the scared. And he met these two Emmaus disciples on the way to Emmaus. On the way to Jerusalem, rather. So you see that the risen Lord doesn't have to meet you in church. He can meet you in your bedroom tonight when you start to meditate. He can meet you when you're driving your car to work. Just listen for his voice. The risen Lord is everywhere. And they encourage you to use the key that you have. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and let him into your heart. God bless you. God bless you. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Amen.
Amen. Will you please stand? The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to this table as your guests, as your children, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, resting only on the worthiness of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. As we look upon the emblems of our Savior's death, may we remember why he died, to cleanse and to heal, and to satisfy your righteousness and justice. We remember his eternal love and boundless grace. And may we this morning receive the assurance of forgiveness, eternal life, and the hope of glory. As the bread and cup nourish your body, so may our indwelling Holy Spirit strengthen our soul until the day of Christ's appearing, when we will hunger and thirst no more, but we may stick to him in his heavenly abode. We ask you, Christ. And we have taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. had given thanks, he broke it. Yes, he broke it. He said, take this and eat. This is my body that is shared or broken for you. For me. Amen. Amen. And in like manner, he took the cup. After say, after supper, saying, this is the New Testament. My blood, which is shed for you and for me, for the remission of our sins. And he said, This do in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen.
invite you to come and participate in the communion of saints. Amen. Ushers, please. Those who are coming, please come. have to say sing the chorus, Alive, Alive. And those of you who haven't already done so, you can bring your offerings up during the singing of the sound.
Let's bow our hearts. We thank you, dear Father, for our tithes and offering. We thank you for giving us much. And as we return a portion of what you have given unto us, Lord, we ask, pray, dear Lord, that it be used for your kingdom and for your glory. Father, this I ask in no other name but in the name of Jesus, with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the name of the Praise Lord. God. And now for the announcements. Are there any birthdays this week? <laughs> Sister Tiffany, what day are you, may I ask? Tuesday? Happy birthday. <laughs> and are there any anniversaries coming up this week? Okay. And, um, I heard from uh, Sister Valerie Worrell this morning, and she asked me to convey her love and Easter wishes to each and every one today. And our brother and sister Clark, the elderly couple, they send the greetings to the church from the from them and their family. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe that's it for the announcements. And now we will sing the doxology. Number 82, as we come to the morning's worship service. Hymn number 82 of your hymn number. First and second verse. Sunday to all. Amen. He is risen indeed. Risen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is risen indeed. The Lord is with you. Also with you. Go and serve the Lord. 